Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at uniform motion in a circle. So let's get going. So in what follows, I want you to consider a particle moving with uniform speed in a circular path as shown below. So it's a constant speed, uniform speed, and we've got a particle here moving with the speed v. Now, notice that it's actually sweeping out a displacement s, or what we call an arc, and let's assume that the particle, this object, has travelled from this point here round to this point here. Well, as it's moved from there to there, it's swept out a displacement of s, and we call this an arc. So we could label the radius of the circle of the path that that particle is actually taking, and also the angle theta that it is swept out there. And now that we have these three things labelled, we can actually relate them together using an equation. So it says here that the arc swept out by the particle s is given by s equals r times theta. So if you want to find the magnitude of that arc length there, s, then you can multiply the radius of the circular path that the particle will follow by the angular displacement of that particle. So we have s equals r theta, where s is arc length measured in metres, r is the radius of the circular path measured in metres, and theta is angular displacement measured in radians. Now here we're considering the linear velocity v of the particle to be constant, and also the angular velocity omega to be constant. We can say that the time taken for the particle to cover two pi radians, one complete revolution, 360 degrees, is given by the period t. And using speed, distance and time, we can therefore write omega in terms of the period t. So we have this expression here, the omega, the angular velocity, is equal to two pi over t. This is just a form of speed distance time, as we said here. So this is saying that the angular velocity is equal to the angular displacement divided by the time. And the angular displacement here is the two pi radians from the complete revolution. And the time is the time for one revolution. So we've got omega equals two pi over t. And you should know from National 5 and higher physics when doing waves topics, that frequency is equal to one over the period. Now we can use this expression to rearrange for the period t, and therefore replace the period t in this equation here to have it in form of frequency if you didn't know what the period was. So that means we would arrive at omega equals 2 pi times f, where the symbols have their usual meanings. So if you're trying to find the angular velocity of an object, then you can use 2 pi over t, or you can use 2 pi times f, depending on whether you know the period or whether you know the frequency. Now just like we wrote omega equals 2 pi over t for angular velocity, we can also write linear velocity v in a similar way in terms of speed, distance and time. So if we're writing speed equals distance over time, we've got v equals 2 pi times r over t, where t is still your period for your one revolution, but your distance now for one full revolution in terms of linear motion is going to be 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle. So that's 2 pi times the radius divided by the period t. If you were then to replace the 2 pi over t here with omega, because we saw that omega equals 2 pi over t earlier, then this means we can write the linear velocity v as v equals r omega. And this is a very useful equation when doing problems on uniform motion in a circle. So we have that the linear velocity v is equal to the radius of the the circle times the angular velocity omega. So v is linear velocity measured in meters per second, r is the radius of the circular path measured in meters, and omega is the angular velocity measured in radians per second. Now the next important thing to note is that any object which is moving in a circular path has a changing velocity and is therefore accelerating. And that's the case because acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So if something's changing velocity, then it must be accelerating. And the reason we can say this is because velocity is a vector quantity and the direction of travel of the object is constantly changing, even if its speed is constant, which is the case here. Remember we said at the start to consider a particle travelling with a constant linear velocity and a constant angular velocity. Now another new term here is called the tangential acceleration, and we can show how we arrive at this new equation. So it says here that we have already seen that the angular acceleration of a rotating object is given by alpha equals d omega by dt. So that was our expression for angular acceleration alpha. Then says the tangential acceleration of a rotating object is defined as the rate of change of linear tangential velocity. All we mean by tangential velocity is this velocity here, the velocity v, which is at a tangent to the circle at any point. So if our point was here, it's going to be at this point here, or along this direction. But because the particle is moving around anti-clockwise, then the tangent will move off in this direction. If the particle was over here, for example, the tangent would move off down in this direction in a straight line, and similarly down here it would move off in this direction and so on. Now since v equals r omega for linear velocity, we've just seen that earlier, then at any instant we can say that dv by dt is equal to r d omega by dt. Then differentiating with respect to time both quantities which are functions of time, v and omega, 
Then we have dv by dt is equal to r times d omega by dt. Now we've already seen in a previous video that dv by dt is the acceleration and d omega by dt is the angular acceleration alpha. Now instead of calling it a linear acceleration, what we're going to call it now is a tangential acceleration because we've defined it in terms of a tangential velocity. So we get the at equals r alpha where t means tangential. So we have the at is tangential acceleration measured in meters per second squared. R is the radius of the circular path measured in meters, and alpha is angular acceleration measured in radians per second squared. It then says to note that the direction of AT is at a tangent to the circular path of radius R, just like we said for the direction of the tangential velocity earlier. So just to show you what we mean, the tangential acceleration for this particle at this point would be going off in the same direction there, tangent to that circle, as the tangential velocity there. That's all for now folks, I hope you found value in the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.